we can we we update what to um, track and to and we update the options for the chain stream. So here we can either update the table or that we want to track, or we can alter the retention period and value capture type that we want to track. Next, we're going to cover uh, Spanner chain streams internal storage. So chain streams internally uses a Spanner table to store change data. And as you can see in the diagram on the left, or on the right, we have um, user splits. So a user split represents an immutable key range of data. And the chain stream splits track these immutable key ranges of data. Um, so when a change occurs on a user split tracked by chain stream, Cloud Spanner writes a corresponding chain stream record to the chain stream split. And Spanner co-locates the chain stream data and the user data in the same serving resource so that they are processed by the same server to minimize write overhead. Um, so Spanner scales by dynamically splitting and merging the user data based on database load and size and distributing splits across serving resources. So there, to enable chain stream reads and writes at scale, Spanner also splits the internal chain stream um, storage along with database data. So the chain stream data partitions are dynamic and they evolve as user data is split and merged. And um, understanding the split pace based dynamic partitioning is helpful to understanding how chain stream queries work since uh, the Spanner query API is designed for chain streams to be queried concurrently using the chain from the chain stream data partitions. So next we're gonna cover chain stream partitions and the parent child relationships. So a user can think of a chain stream partition as a logical container that tracks data changes for an immutable key range. So here, if we look at partition one on the left part of the screen, partition one tracks uh, key ranges one through 20, and it has a start time at T0. Uh, the body of the partition describes the data changes that occur from T1, from T0 onwards uh, for key ranges one through 20. So at T1, uh, you see that the row one is inserted into users. At T2, you update row four in users and et cetera. And it goes all the way until T5, um, at which point uh, Spanner decided to move the underlying user split to another server. Um, for, for example, for the purpose of re perhaps readjusting the load on the existing server. Um, so here you can see that um, we terminated partition P1 and we inserted a child partition record called P2. And this informs the users that at T5, um, they need to start another uh, partition query for partition P2. Um, so then partition P2 also tracks key ranges one through 20, and it has a start time at T5, and it tracks the data changes up until T15, uh, at which point a split happens. And here you can see that two child partitions, P3 and P4, are now in the final entry. And this tells the user that they need to start two partition queries starting from T15 to track the same key range, um, most likely concurrently. Um, so here you can see both partitions P3 and P4. Um, so partition P3 tracks one through 10 and partition P4 tracks 10 through 20, and both have the same start timestamp at T15. And they track the same changes, they track changes up until T50, at which point the final type of spanner operation can occur, which is a merge. And both P3 and P4 are merged into P5, which tracks the entire key range and has a start timestamp at T50. Okay. Uh, so the chain stream query API. So to read chain stream data, we use a spe special value table function that is consumed by the execute streaming SQL API. And the name of the table valued function will be the chain stream, chain, chain stream name prefixed by read underscore. 
And there are a bunch of arguments in the TVF. Um, and except for start timestamp, all other arguments are optional. The end timestamp can be in the future, and the start timestamp can be up to the amount of the retention period in the past. For example, like seven days or one hour, like mentioned before. And the chain stream TVF will return a stream of spanner structs, each of which contains one of a data change record, a child partition record, or a heartbeat record. So a data change record captures uh, the actual data changes, um, and it also captures metadata, such as the type of the change, for example, insert, update, delete, the commit timestamp, and the uh, spanner primary keys, et cetera. Uh, the child partition record will contain the partition token corresponding to the chain stream partitions that corresponds to the newly created splits, like we mentioned before. And if a user receives a child partition record, that means that the uh, current query is terminated and that they need to start a new query with the new child partition records. Um, and the final type of record to receive is a heartbeat record. And it's an indication of forward progress. Um, it means that um, for, it means that the query has returned all changes in a partition up to the timestamp specified in the heartbeat record. And the heartbeat, the interval at which we receive heartbeat records is determined by the heartbeat milliseconds parameter in the change from TVF. So for example, if that parameter was set to 30 seconds overall, this means for the last 30 seconds, there have been no data changes received. And um, for a single change stream query, all records will be ordered by commit timestamp. Um, so we can go over a high level user flow for querying chain streams. Um, so a user first executes an initial query in which the partition token field is set to null. And this will return all chain stream partitions that are active at a, at a timestamp T. And um, it will return a list of child partition records to the user. The user should then, um, for each child partition token, execute uh, a corresponding query. And this will return a list of data change records and or heartbeat records um, to the user. And um, at the very end of each partition query, uh, it will return a list of child partition records, which will indicate that the user will need to start new queries for the received partition tokens. And this cycle will continue until the user specified end timestamp. Um, So next we'll talk about the um, chain stream connector. So uh, what is the chain stream connector? It is the front door to most cloud customers when interacting with cloud spanner chain streams. Um, it provides a high level abstraction layer over the chain stream API. Um, it is designed to handle the non-functional requirements um, such as managing the chain stream partition lifecycle, um, distributing the work, reporting metrics and logging, um, which will allow customers to focus on business logic. Um, it is implemented using the Apache Beam framework and tested and released using Google Cloud Dataflow, which is Google Cloud's offering for data processing pipelines. Um, so this is like an overall view of what a um, user pipeline would look like for using the Spanner connector. So the Spanner connector pulls chain stream records from Spanner um, and outputs them as a P collection of data change records. It will apply a series of user defined transformations and then perhaps perform some windowing or partitioning and then finally output the elements into a user defined sync, which can be BigQuery or GCS. So the actual connector has three main components. The uh, first is the chain stream metadata table, 
and it is used for partition token management. Um, the next two components are two splittable do functions, which we'll cover in more detail later. The first is uh, called the tech new partition function, which is in charge of retrieving chain stream partitions from the metadata table and outputting them into read chain stream partition function. And read chain stream partition function will then query these partitions and output resulting data change records um, into downstream processing. Um, but the technique partition function is also in charge of querying the low watermark for the metadata table. And that low mod watermark will be updated for each partition um, from the read chain stream partition function as it receives records from the, meta from the, uh, the partition. So we can cover the components in detail. So as mentioned, the chain stream metadata is used to store the partition state of the chain stream reads, and they are utilized by connector splittable do functions to schedule new partitions to be read. Um, and they will also store, uh, connector splittable do functions will also store new partitions to query into this table. Um, so the main component of connector implementation is via splittable do functions, and they are used to schedule chain stream partitions and perform chain stream queries. So for a technical explanation, each splittable do function insta instance processes a restriction element pair, and the job of the restriction is to dictate the amount of work to be done for the given element and to track progress. Um, so for chain stream queries, the element would be the chain stream partition token, and the restriction would be the time range in which we want to query this token. Um, a splittable do function is splittable because the restriction can be split at any time. So for example, let's say we want to query P1 from T0 to T10, and if we have received records up to T4, and a split operation is executed, then the primary restriction is T0 to T4, and the residual is T4 to T10. Um, the currently executing splittable do function will continue executing the primary restriction, and the restrict residual restriction will be scheduled to a new instance of the splittable do function. And normally, splitting is used to checkpoint the state that has been achieved so far for the progress of the restriction. So uh, the first global do function is called the tech new partition function. And the main logic for this function is a loop that executes every 100 milliseconds to query the metadata tables. And it will retrieve a list of partitions that have not been processed yet. And for each partition, it will generate a new partition record and send it to the next splittable do function in the pipeline, which is read chain stream partition function. And as mentioned previously, it's also the function that is responsible for defining the low watermark for the entire connector pipeline. And it retrieves the low watermark by reading the minimum watermark from the metadata table. Um, the next uh, splittable do function is called read chain stream partition function. Um, and for this do function, the uh, element is the partition token, and the restriction is a start time and end time stamp. This function initiates a streaming SQL query against the partition token, and it takes an action for each element received, depending on the type of element. So, for example, when a data change record is received, it will augment the record with additional metadata and send it downstream in a P collection. Um, if it receives a child partition record, it will add the child partition into the metadata table so it can be de detected by detect new partition function. And if a heartbeat record is received, the connector will uh, just use the timestamp to update the restriction. And this SDF is also also uses a bundle finalizer callback to update the watermark of the given partition in the metadata table with the last timestamp received from the change inquiry. So uh, there were several design challenges when developing the connector. Um, the first challenge was deciding how to track watermarks in a multi-stage pipeline. 
And as mentioned previously, the final strategy was to use a spanner metadata table to track the watermarks. Um, so read chain stream partition function was in charge of updating the watermarks while detect new partition function was in charge of querying the single low watermark value. Um, the second challenge was defining auto scaling um, decisions in a scenario where the chain stream queries were unbounded and streaming. Um, so the only way we can impact auto scaling decisions is to define the backlog estimate. And given that chain stream queries are unbounded and streaming, um, defining this algorithm required a lot of tuning in order to get the auto scaling decisions correct. Um, so for productionization of the connector, um, the first type of productionization we provided was code samples. And we provided code samples such as ordering per spanner primary key, which um, uh, outputs the data change records in an ordered stream, in a stream that's ordered by commit timestamp per spanner primary key. And the second type of code sample we provided was assembling transactions in which we outputted elements um, composed of all records belonging to a single transaction. Um, we also um, had provided data flow templates to customers, um, and data flow templates allow users to stage Apache Beam pipelines on Google Cloud and run them using the Google Cloud console um, command line or REST API calls. And we provided two templates to customers. The first template streams records into GCS, and the second template uh, streams change records into BigQuery. Um, and this is an example of a code sample that we provided to customers to um, order change stream records by spanner primary key. So the first, uh, first we uh, applied the spanner IO connector to read chain streams from a specified um, project and instance and with a specified start timestamp. And then we applied resulting transformations in order to order the uh, records by commit timestamp per spanner primary key. So we also have um, several ongoing challenges. The first challenge is that although the spanner chain stream partitions are ordered by commit timestamp, um, the P collections are unordered by nature, which gets rid of chain streams natural ordering and increases latency when we want ordered records. Um, the second challenge is that the connector can currently only be run on data flow, which unfortunately does not offer sub-second latency and offers almost 30 seconds of latency at tail. And it is also unlikely that um, it can offer sub-second latency even if it is adapted to Apache Flink based on initial experiments. Um, so for future work, we plan on supporting the connector for Apache Flink, Apache Spark. We also plan on supporting snapshotting slash draining for the connector and also improving connector tail latency. So, yep. So I think this is the end of my part. Uh, so I'm Hai Guo Liu. I'm a software engineer at Google. So I will give an overview of how we use uh, Apache Beam and uh, the Google Cloud Dataflow uh, to integrate trend streams with other uh, Google Cloud services. Uh, so, uh, so we use Dataflow template uh, to uh, to integrate with other services. So, Dataflow template is basically um, allows you to stage your pipelines. Um, so, um, you can imagine it's something like um, a compiled and packaged code, um, and stored somewhere, and you can call the Dataflow API to create a, a Dataflow pipeline from the Dataflow template. So you can create your own custom Dataflow template, or you can use one of the uh, Google-provided Dataflow template. So Trainstreams um, has two Dataflow template offerings, um, like Nancy mentioned before. Um, so um, we have a Trainstream to Google Cloud Storage uh, template, which is um, an optimized storage service. We also have Trainstream to BigQuery, uh, which is the data warehouse. So both of these templates use uh, the Trainstream connector that, man, uh, that Nancy just mentioned. Uh, so I'll do a demo to show how these things actually works. 
So now um, I am in, so this is the uh, cloud, uh, cloud Spanner page. So I have already created a database. Uh, so this is the database schema. So the schema is pretty simple. Uh, we only have uh, one table uh, called stingless table. And uh, the primary key of this table is single ID. And the non-primary keys are first name and last name. And here we create a train stream called train stream singers um, that watch the singers table. It will all watch uh, the changes to uh, to all the columns of the singer table. And uh, this is the data flow UI page. So uh, so we can click create job from template uh, to create pipeline from the train stream template. So you just enter job name, and then we select one of the data flow template. So we select one of the train stream one. And uh, we, we can just input some uh, parameters like uh, cross banner instance ID, um, cross banner database, and metadata instance ID and database, and the train stream name, and the output BQR data site. So, uh, so to save some, some time, I have, um, I have already created uh, two pipelines from the uh, templates that I mentioned before. So, um, so here is the uh, here is one pipeline uh, created from the BigQuery template, and here is the the other pipeline created for the uh, from the GCS template. So let's uh, first go over some uh, sub stages of this pipeline to give you a, a high level idea of how this uh, pipeline works. Uh, so this is the BigQuery pipeline, and uh, so the first stage is uh, read from train stream stage. Um, so this stage uses the connector uh, that we just introduced before, and uh, it will output some uh, data train record, uh, which we will consume uh, in the following stage. And then we have a bunch of stage to, uh, to handle schema management and uh, convert the data train record uh, to BigQuery table rows. And, uh, um, and then we use the BigQuery table row to, uh, to write to BigQuery uh, using BigQuery connector. And uh, there were there may be some uh, failures while we uh, after we write to BigQuery or while we trans transform the data train record to be to BigQuery table row, and in that case we just uh, store the failed messages uh, into a data queue, which is essentially some files under GCS directory. And in the same pipeline, we will uh, reconsume those failed messages and reprocess them uh, in this same pipeline. And if uh, if a failed message has been retried for uh, for multiple times and it still won't succeed, so we will store this uh, failed message in the uh, severe data queue, uh, which means that customer have to uh, process uh, this records manually. Um, and then these are the stages for the GCS pipeline. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we have a read train stream, train stream stage, uh, and we create. Uh, window, and then we write those changes uh, into GCS in raw format. So let's see uh, the output of this uh, of this pipeline. Let's see some parameters of this pipeline. So, so the uh, you can see that uh, this GCS pipeline is watching uh, is uh, is using the train stream train stream single table, uh, which which is the uh, train stream that I just showed you before. And it is all putting the uh, the records into uh, high code test demo uh, directory, which is this directory uh, is now empty. And uh, if we look at the BigQuery pipeline, you'll see that um, it is also using uh, train stream singers uh, train stream. So um, and uh, it will output the uh, the records into the high core test demo BigQuery data site, which is uh, this data site. So, so this is high core test demo data site, and it has a um, it has a change block table for singers uh, table. So, um, by the way, so if this table doesn't exist, uh, the BigQuery pipeline will create the, the table for you. And if there is 
it is already existing BigQuery use to use the existing one. And uh, we do a quick uh, select uh, start from this table. You see there's no data um, at the moment in the table. And uh, and yeah, and let's do um, some DML on the on this final table, um, and we should we should be able to see something uh, in the GCS directory and the BigQuery table uh, within around ten seconds, maybe. So this uh, DML is pretty simple. Uh, we just insert a row uh, into the single table where the single ID is one, and the value of first name column is first name, the value of last name column is last name, and then we update. The first name column of this uh, of this row to first name changed, um, and then we uh, we delete uh, this row. Let's ask you this. Uh, okay, so they are succeeded, and uh, we should should be able to see something in the in BigQuery uh, change log table. Okay, so these are the records um, in the BigQuery table. So uh, these elements just go over uh, uh, those stages that I just mentioned. And uh, if you look at these records, so we have insert. Uh, so first, let me introduce the, the schema of this change log table. So basically, we have the same columns as the standard columns. Right? So uh, single ID, first name, and, and then last name. And we have some additional metadata information uh, for the data change record, like the modification type and the uh, standard table name and the spinal commit time snap, and, and et cetera. Um, so, uh, so, so this is the insert uh, record. So the single ID is one, and the first name column is first name, last name column is last name, and then we have an update. Uh, so first name column is changed to first name changed, and then last name column is changed to last name. And then finally, we have the delete record uh, where the both uh, first name and last name are now. So uh, one thing to note is that this uh, BigQuery table is not a replica table of the corresponding uh, spanner table. Uh, it is a change log table, which means that it will only uh, store changes um, of the spanner record, a uh, change string record. Um, and then let's look at the GCS directory. So these are the files created from the uh, change stream data change record. We can look at one of them. So, yeah. So, so this is the data change record in the uh, in the raw format. So you can see that. Um, so this is uh, this is insert insert data change record, and uh, uh, for insert we don't have uh, we don't have old values and we have new values, uh, where the first name is first name um, and uh, last name is last name. And uh, and we have other metadata information uh, similar to the uh, metadata uh, columns of the uh, BigQuery table. And uh, there are other other uh, files uh, for the other two uh, DMLs. So I won't go into the, the details of them. They are pretty much uh, the same thing uh, to save some time. Um, okay, so this is the, the demo part. Uh, so for the next part, I will um, we'll talk about some um, some challenges uh, while we were developing this uh, this someplace. So, uh, so one of the interesting one was uh, was about uh, find So the context here is that. Uh, the change stream record will only contains the check column that, that are changed. Right? So, um, so given the previous uh, the uh, previous singular table, uh, if we do a DML like update singles set first name to A, uh, where single ID is one, and uh, in the change stream change stream record, we only see that the first name is A and the single ID is one, but we don't know the value of the last name column. Uh, but uh, uh, but we need to populate the entire BigQuery row uh, in, this in this case. So we need to know the value of last name column. Um, so in this case, we just need to do a spanner uh, still read um, at the commit timestamp of the data change record. Uh, so by the way, spanner is a multi-version database, which means that you can 
uh, query the data in the past um, at a specific timestamp, um, as long as the data is within the retention period. Um, so the initial the initial solution was just to um, add a still read stage um, after we get the record, and then we did some performance tests. Um, so the test shows that uh, the watermark latency and the system lag was pretty high. Um, so we did some debugging and turns out that uh, the reason is this flow optimizes the graph so that the read change stage and still read stage are fused together, which makes the still read queued up in the same thread. Uh, because still read is an external API call and it's expensive. So it increased uh, uh, the pipeline latency. So the final solution was just to um, introduce a reshuffle stage um, after we get the uh, transfer record uh, to improve the uh, still read parallelism. So logically it's something like uh, before the fix, we uh, in the same thread, we read record one and then we do still read uh, for record one. And then we read record two and then we do still read for record two. And after the fix, uh, we it's like we read record one in the, uh, and then record two in the same thread, and then we redistribute those uh, records into different threads uh, to do still read. Okay, um, and for the future work, so we are considering um, a transform to pop up template. We're also considering a uh, transform uh, to improve the existing BigQuery template uh, with full table replication, uh, potentially at different consistent level. Uh, we're also considering uh, a new transfer mode that will give a uh, data change record uh, for the entire row so that we don't have to uh, do, do a still read uh, for the BigQuery template to uh, reduce the template complexity and uh, improve the, uh, the latency. And uh, that's all for our talk.